Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Friday over here in the Atlantic. Still not all that much going on for this time of year. We do have tropical storm Ophelia sitting here east of the Antilles Islands. Still a very sheared system with an exposed low level center that is easily visible here. Most of the convection is confined off in a band to the east and there's a little bit trying to burst up to the north of the center this morning, but she'll probably remain a fairly dry and sheared system for much of her life. If you look at the cirrus clouds just north of the Caribbean here, you can see they're moving out of the west northwest in plum a broad area of upper troughing just to the north of this whole area which will probably be shearing Ophelia as she moves west northwest. Most of the models take her now just north of the Antilles Islands and so the core of her, if there is a core at all, will probably avoid the islands but notice how the rain bands are trailing pretty far to the south of Ophelia's center here meaning that these bands could still end up over Puerto Rico, the areas that have seen flooding even if Ophelia's center is way up in here to the north of the Caribbean. So folks in here should still watch for heavy rainfall from this, but as advertised, this shouldn't be a huge wind issue for the folks in here, which is of course good news. Some of the models also recurve her fast enough that she could affect Bermuda, so the folks there may want to keep an eye on her as well, but again, probably not going to be a very strong system. We do have a batch of convection just east of the Bahamas here, but whatever is associated with this is getting rapidly absorbed now into this funnel boundary and area of low pressure to the north along the eastern seaboard and should not be too much of a threat. There is a Hurricane Hillary over here in the eastern Pacific, which just now going off the screen as the sun came up had a very clear small eye reminiscent of Wilma's eye in terms of size here. It's pretty small, very well defined storm, category 4 and it's uh, one of those storms we haven't really gotten to see this year in the Atlantic, a very well-defined beautiful core, very mature hurricane with just amazing intensity, something we haven't seen, which is great news, it really is, but it's also a little bit of a strange season here in the Atlantic in that we've had so many storms, but all of them have been so weak. Now we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to look at the global satellite. This is the global IR loop for the last five days. There's no delay on the last frame, so it's a little bit hard to see when the loop restarts. But for any kind of a reference, you can look down here at the date and hopefully get a sense of when this loop starts and begins. Now if we look over we're going to look, we're going to take a couple of lessons from the Western Pacific here. If we look closely, I'm going to let this loop restart. We're going to see that we've had two typhoons that have recurved into a front over the last five days, one east of Japan, the other right into Japan, which is Roke, which we've been watching. And you can see that the flow of the clouds here has been generally northwest over eastern Asia here, implying that we've had troughing over western Siberia, pressure at the surface to the northwest of Japan. Now look at this funnel boundary before these typhoons recurve. See the orientation of this funnel boundary, west-southwest to east-northeast here, very flat looking. Now if we look over here in the Atlantic, if we search for areas where convection has been popping a lot, ignoring over here near the Cape Verde Islands, one area we can probably look at is the southwest Atlantic in terms of where popcorn convection has been going off spontaneously due to warm water for the last five days. And you can see that we've also had troughing developing over the eastern part of our continent if you look at the cloud, fo cloud flow for the last five days. But look at the orientation of the frontal boundary we've had over the eastern seaboard here. Much sharper and more oriented vertical up and down north and south, more southwest to northeast here. And we've had a couple of pulses of cloud that have raced off and gotten absorbed into this front from this area of tropical convection, but we haven't had any tropical cyclones there. And yes, part of that is that the MJO is confined, is confined to this part of the world, which you can see all the convective activities in the Indian Ocean and Western Pacific, but despite that, you can still see that when the, when the corridor of low pressure is oriented like this, it really absorbs everything and doesn't allow things to consolidate into tropical cyclones down here. So we take this boundary in here, outline that where the mean boundary has been, and then we take the western Pacific boundary and outline that. You can see the difference in the tilt there. And what this has allowed the western Pacific to do is that the northwest flow aloft over eastern Asia has, has allowed surface pressures to build to the north of the western end of this frontal boundary. And this has allowed convergence to increase down to the south and allow low pressure to consolidate into the two typhoons that curved up into this trough 
into this frontal boundary near Japan. But over here in the Atlantic, this, this front is oriented so much north-south, which we call meridional alignment, that the low pressure has not allowed convergence to really focus in on the Caribbean and southwest Atlantic areas, so we're not really getting that low pressure. Everything is too spread out because everything wants to get drawn up in here because low pressure exists over the eastern seaboard. And we've been working on getting high pressure to build in from the northwest. And once we get that, we may see things start to consolidate a little bit more down here, which is why I've been concerned. And you know, we had a run yesterday from the European that showed high pressure developing of 1,020 millibars plus over the eastern seaboard. And down to the south, we had low pressure trying to develop in the Caribbean. And one of the runs of the GFS earlier this morning had a storm showing up in the Caribbean as well. So there's still some hints on the models, not any kind of definitive support yet. And this has been the problem is that my ideas for this have kept shifting forward deeper into now early October. So we may have to still watch this for a while and we'll see what eventually comes to pass and if we actually get a storm out of this pattern. But I still think that the hints are there that something like this could occur down the line and we'll have to continue to watch this pattern to see if it matures enough to get us the kind of setup that we had in the Western Pacific that recently bought them a two typhoon punch right near Japan moving northeast due to the kind of pattern we might see in 10 days over in our area of the world. So we'll keep an eye on that and otherwise fairly quiet and Ophelia is not going to be that big of a deal though folks in the eastern Caribbean should watch for heavy rainfall. Alright that's it for today. Thanks for watching.